The penultimate day of the Paris Dakar 2001 sees Pascal Maimon lose it and stand right in front of Jose Maria Servia's buggy. Controversial circumstances indeed. More news in a moment. Therefore, Jean-Louis Schlesser goes on to win the stage. And Giovanni Sala is victorious in the bikes. the penultimate stage of the Paris Dakar Rally 2001 from Tambacunda to Dakar itself before a short super special on the final day. A road section and then a stage of 217 kilometers. It was actually the same stage that was used last year, but this time it's run in the opposite direction. A fast start and then a denser second half with regards to the vegetation. The motorbikes set off early this morning. Their final really early start underneath the Senegal door. Half past seven this morning, the sun came over the horizon. Not that the crews had much time to view it. However, it was Giovanni Sala who was getting all crossed up at times, but the KTMs were dominant once more. Italian victorious today, and everybody in high spirits. Alain Duclos, the Frenchman, well, he was 10th today. You saw him do so well a couple of days ago when he finished fourth, when he went home, in inverted commas, to Mali. Cyril Depre, the Frenchman who was victorious yesterday, was not so lucky at times today. their prey crash but so did PG Lundmark the Swedish hero had a terrible crash some 20 kilometers into the stage and initial tests and reports have said that he's got a broken wrist and more painfully so a dislocated shoulder poor PG Lundmark on the production machine so close and yet so far America's Jimmy Lewis on another BMW having a good day Lewis Continuing on, and third position for him, some four minutes back. Jean Brucey was fourth, Carrie Tiernan was fifth. But so far as the German BMWs were concerned, they were up there towards Dakar. After, of course, the loss of Juan Roma on the halfway point. Donkeys in the way for Britain's John Deacon. Deacon was sixth. Five and a half minutes back. But really only a short stage today, some two and a half hours, the time taken for Giovanni Sala. Through the villages they sped. And the local population was just not interested at times. Here Hubert Oriel saying, well, we have to do everything on the Dakar. And unfortunately, the finish has been positioned in the wrong place today. So I'm going to do it myself. He gets his watch out and he times the riders coming in on the finish. Archeron's on the right, Mione in the middle. And Mione, just those few more kilometers to go. His son was there, his wife as well, flown in from Europe. Jordi Archeron's a warm pat on the back and an emotional family moment. Sala victorious, two hours and 28 minutes dead. Dupre a little bit more. Lewis, Brucey and Tiernan. Good for Lewis's morale to be in third after his injured wrists earlier in the rally. However, Mioni still holds that overall lead of 25 minutes from Archeron, Stugavado, Puyol and Cox.
Mr. Fabrizio Mioni here telling us at the finish, well, this victory here with my family, well, it's wonderful, with Helena, my wife, and Joel, my son, and all the time that I take away from then, this victory pays all our sacrifices and pains that we have taken to arrive at this moment. Still to pray here, saying, I was here just to learn, and today I had to pass my exam to know if I was able to lead from the front. I succeeded, and that was a great moment for 70 kilometers. But I did make a mistake in the village, but I saw it immediately. It's a good experience, and now I want to come back next year and do it all again. So then, Fabrizio Mioni on the right has done 10 Dakars, two podiums, a third and a second. But the battle with Jordi Arcarons, who's doing his 13th Dakar, he's also had podiums, but more. Five podiums, two thirds and three seconds. Back in 92, Mioni was 12th, but it was a third for Arcarons. In 1993, Mioni retired. But Arcarons was third. In 94, the Paris Dakar went to Dakar and then back to Paris. But the last stage between Orioli and Arcarons, there was just one minute between them. In the end, Orioli was victorious, Arcarons second, Mioni third. In 1995 and 1996, Arcarons was second both years, whilst Mioni was fourth and 38th. Mioni was unlucky after he broke his arm, but it was also a black year as Archerons hit a dog in 97 and was out on the stage from Timbuktu to Neymar. In 98, Mioni was second and Archerons was sixth. In 99, Mioni retired on the very last stage right on the sand of the Dakar beach. And last year, an engine blew for Archerons, but it was a crash for Mioni that put them both out. This year, though, well, it's Mioni's turn to be victorious. He leads 25 minutes ahead of Archeron's. Well, this has really been one of the most controversial days of the 23-year history of the Dakar. Right at the time control this morning, the official here saying to Pascal Maimon, he says, look, you see, I told you to come earlier the buggies arrived before you. Now they've taken a three minute penalty and a one minute penalty. Therefore, the, sh the two Schlesser buggies started first and second on the road, even though Mashioka should have started first on the road after he won the stage yesterday. Mashioka therefore started third on the road, two minutes between each of the cars in the car section. So then with Schlesser having an extra one minute penalty, the lead of Mashuoka was just a little greater. Now, Servia let Schlesser through. Schlesser's right at the top of your screen. Servia's in the middle, and Mashuoka taking to the fields to try and find a way around Servia's dust. But of course, it's a risky maneuver at times. This Dakar rally is foot of potholes, full of ditches, and anything can catch you out. And indeed, that's exactly what did happen to Hiroshi Mashuoka. He hit a tree stump with the rear left wheel, and you can see it already askew, not running true to the rear of the car, and now back in the dust of Servia's vehicle, you can see that wheel is absolutely bucking and rowing, and Mashioka's, even his skill of all the Dakars, he cannot keep it in line, however, he decides to go for one more lunge past Servia, this is early in the stage, he hits the tree with the windscreen, it's all drama and action, and the wheel continues to struggle to hold on to the Mitsubishi Pajero, and after only a few more kilometers, how long could it last? Schlesser in the meantime is rushing away into the distance towards the Dakar on the horizon and what could be a third consecutive victory for the Frenchman. But eventually the Japanese machine that had run faultlessly all rally finally cried enough after having hit that tree stump. You can hear the engine revs on board with our microphone. They are getting lesser and lesser and soon 
it could go no more. And Mashioka's lead had dissipated. Pascal Maimon leaps from the Mitsubishi. And in an act of, well, who knows, he stands in front of the Servia buggy as it hounds down upon the Frenchman. And did it hit the Frenchman? We know not, but that was so risky. Servia on the brakes, and finally Maimon cannot take it anymore. Dakar is the biggest motorsport event in the world and it's certainly the most emotional. Soon though Jean-Pierre Fontenay arrives in the sister Mitsubishi, Maimon still absolutely fuming with rage as one of the officials then arrives but it matters not. Mashuoka in the meantime is trying to mend the wheel with Jean-Pierre Jean Fontenay who says I can't believe it, it's just crazy, unbelievable. It's a nightmare. Maimon here saying, Schleser organized it to start first. We were 100 meters behind Servia and 100 meters further back of Schleser in a big cloud of dust. But their plan was good. When we went left to go around Servia, we then hit a tree stump and we broke the wheel. We continued for a few more kilometers down the road and Schles continued to make more dust. It's not sport, it's not fair. Fontenay in the meantime, as he did a few days ago, helps out his Mitsubishi teammate. In the meantime, the lead of Mashuoka has dissipated and gone away in the dust. Schleser continues on the stage driving well within himself, even though he had to pass many of the motorcycles. And eventually Slesser went on to win the stage today by 5 minutes and 25 seconds. Numbers mean nothing today. It's the drama of the Dakar that has come down to one point. Servia was second on the stage today, those five and a half minutes back of his teammate in the sister Schleser buggy. Souza was third, the leading Mitsubishi today. Mashuoka in the meantime finished 52 minutes behind the leader Schleser. Therefore, Jutta Kleinschmidt, who finished fourth on the stage today, she is now second overall. The Eagles soared, and Schleser was now in the lead of the rally. <laughs> Gregoire de Mavius, the leading Belgian on the stage today with his Nissan, the leading Nissan coming into Dakar. He was a few seconds quicker than the other Belgian in the top ten overall, Stefan Orard, whose turbo diesel buggy. The engine is just about going to hold out to the finish tomorrow. He's been running into some problems, but he will get there. So just a recap. Fontenay finishing 31st on the stage today. Mashuoka 36, losing some 52 minutes. Schleser leads overall from Kleinschmidt. Mashuoka is now third, 45 minutes in the greatest scheme of things, behind the overall leader. The rule book says you can do it, but then the morals come into it. Pescarolo, the Frenchman in his Nissan, similar to that of De Mavis. He was 12th, just one place behind the Kia racing machine in the event, Kurt Leduc. He had a good run once more, and he was 11th. Not a good day, do day though, for Thierry de la Verne. De la Verne had a big moment, rolling his Nissan, seriously damaging the front end, and de la Verne losing an awful lot of time. On board here with Henri Pescarola, he says, I was going quickly this morning, but then we saw De La Verne's accident where he damaged his car. We helped him with a few spare wheels as the front wheels of his car were severely, severely damaged. 
We're going slower and our rear wheels are not quite right. There seems to be something wrong with the rear axle. And indeed, you can see the attitude of the car just not quite running in a straight line. Alors donc euh, sur la fin de spéciale, euh, j'ai calmé un petit peu le jeu, mais sans ça, ça allait bien. And at the moment of this broadcast, De Laverne not on the results as yet. T1 though was won today by Terry Magnaldi in his Mercedes, the Italian coming in a fine 15th overall. That is what the results say. Schlesser, quickest from Servia, Souza, Kleinschmidt, and Demavius. People will never remember the results from today. They will always talk about the dramas. Schlesser leads overall now from Kleinschmidt. Mashoka third, Servia fourth, Souza fifth. So let's hear what everyone had to say about it. Jean-Louis Schlesser saying what happened. Well, we made a mistake arriving at the start line this morning by two or three minutes. That's all. The question being, in the zone, there were four cars. The start zone, he means. Well, yes, we were in front. And in the start zone, no one can overtake. When we saw our mistake, it was too late. But it was not important. And there is no overtaking in the zone, remember. Henri Mann here, the co-driver from Schlesser, saying we played an anticipated start and we took risks for a penalty. This surely put pressure on Mashuoka. Jean-Marie Lurquin, the co-driver for Serbia, saying in the WRC it's a tactic. The co-driver didn't understand that he couldn't overtake in the start zone. It's clear. But he just has to follow Jean-Louis and he wins. I don't understand why he was so angry. I repeat, if he follows Jean-Louis, he wins the race. Jean-Louis took the penalty, so with an extra two or three minutes advantage, he had an advantage on the stage. Ulrich Bremner here, the boss of Mitsubishi, saying, we have to understand how these things can happen in a normal rally. There is no problem in the WRC because if someone starts in front of you, you tend to keep your advantage because they are such shorter stages. But here in the Dakar, all is different. Yesterday, Mashuoka worked a lot to keep his starting position for first on the road this morning. And we have the impression that his first place of this morning has been robbed by Schlesser. I think it's not sport. So today, we are unlucky. You were driving very fast. No. What percentage were you driving? So, next time, we will try a win. Carol Laprace continues to lead into Dakar with his Tatra. The monsters, not so much of the desert, but soon to be of the cool sea air on the Senegalese coast. Laprace has driven throughout the three-week event, up against the MANs, up against the Mercedes, up against the Camazes, and of course the Hino. The Hino of Sugawara is in second. Johan Peter Reif in his MAN, the KTM machine, is third. So tomorrow, the last stage of the Dakar 2001. 25 kilometers, a short road section before a run around the edge of Lac Rose. And after the podium, the competitors come back into central Dakar in convoy before the prize giving at the Meridian Hotel. Well, I've said it many times before, but what a day that was. The Dakar will not lie down one more day to go.